the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. Practical psychology for today. Featuring the works of Idris Shah, voiced by David Alt. Welcome to the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. In this edition of the podcast, we present excerpts from the Dermis Probe by Idris Shah. This audio has been made available by the Idris Shah Foundation. The Fruit It was reported to the very wisest men of the land of fools that the trees were bearing, and so they went out to collect fruit. The trees, sure enough, were laden, their branches pulled down almost to the ground. When the very wisest men reached the trees, they fell to discussing which crop they would harvest first. Since they could not come to any agreement on this, they tried another subject. Now they discovered that there was no accord about whether to pluck the fruit with their left or right hands. Then there was another problem of equal difficulty, and another until they realized that they must withdraw to a more suitable place to thrash things out. Finally, after full participation of all the learned institutions, all was settled. The very wisest men again found themselves under the trees. But by then it was winter. The fruit had fallen and lay rotting on the ground. What a pity that these trees are so treacherous, exclaimed the very wisest men. Those branches had no right to swing up again like that. But never mind, you can at least see that the fruit was rotten anyway. Even a cup of tea, if you drink it, will force you to answer it, saying. The Magic Word the three wisest men of the land of fools, by some lucky chance, met Hidda walking the earth trying to impart wisdom. Would you like to know the word whereby everything can be accomplished? he asked them. Yes, indeed, said the three wise men. Hidda said, Are you ready to hear it? Yes, indeed, said they. So Hidda told them the word. The first wise man said, But this is a word which anyone could pronounce. This cannot be of any use. So he promptly forgot it. The second wise man said, This word is too inelegant for me. And he found that he could not remember it. The third wise man said, It can be written down, so it cannot be of any use. It does not sound like what I expected, so it is not the right kind of magic word. Then they all noticed that a deputation of ordinary citizens of the land of fools was waiting to hear some of their wisdom, so they hurried off to fulfil their obligations. How to prove it Two people of the land of fools were talking. The first said, I'm no idiot, I can multiply numbers. The second said, I don't believe it. I bet you this silver coin that I can, said the first. Go ahead then, let's hear you, said the second. Here you are, said the first man. Two and two are ninety-nine. Fair enough, here's your money. People make a hat out of a pair of shoes, and then wonder why you ask them why they are not walking on their heads, saying... Yearning. A man said to the sage Humayuni, In my earlier years I used to yearn for a teacher and for instruction, but I never found any which fully satisfied me, and now I no longer feel such a need. Humayuni said, If you had sought a teacher and a teaching, being content with what you found, you would have been a seeker. In fact, while you were only seeking the fulfilment of a yearning, you were unteachable at the time. The thirsty man may be incapable of recognizing water if over-thirstiness has maddened him. The way to find water is not always to increase your thirst, 
It depends upon the degree and nature of the thirst at the right moment. A camel is dear at twopence if you have not got twopence. Proverb Man and Sufi It is related that someone once said to Mullah Jami, You do not behave like a great poet and Sufi. How do we know that you are genuine? He replied, You, on the other hand, behave almost exactly like a human being. That is how we know that you are not yet one. The cat can do what the tiger cannot. Proverb The Book A young man was about to be married, and his prospective father-in-law was an unbearably pious and literal-minded cleric. The youth went to his Sufi mentor and asked how the old man might be directed towards the path of understanding. He will be directed, said the sage. But in what manner? The question has been formulated, the answer will develop. The question is not permissible, said the Sufi. Then how should I act towards my father-in-law, if that is a legitimate question? asked the bridegroom. Put up with him. When the wedding day came, and the couple moved into their new home, the cleric followed them, bearing on his back a huge leather-bound box. On its cover was inscribed, The Holy Recital. The newlyweds put the case on a shelf and left it there. Some months later, things went wrong for the young man. He lost his job, his small capital was soon exhausted, and he thought about approaching his moneyed father-in-law for help to set himself up in a small business and to meet his growing debts. Approach your father-in-law by all means, counselled the Sufi sage. The young man wrote a letter outlining his situation to his wife's father, and the old man arrived in short order, bringing with him the local judge and a couple of other scholars. When all were assembled in the sitting room, the old man quavered, You have been brought to this pass through your own flagrant disregard for the Sharia, the sacred law. So saying, he pointed to the Quran case and called for it to be brought down and opened. But why should you say that we do not have regard for the law? asked the young man. You do not read the scriptures, said the cleric. Sure enough, when the box was opened, it was found to be filled with gold pieces. Then the young man said, But has it not been said that knowledge is better than reading? And he explained that he knew the Quran by heart. The judge said, You brought me here in order to pronounce whether this young couple were pious or not. I certainly cannot say that you can find fault with this son-in-law of yours. No, indeed, said the ancient, and I do sincerely repent, for this youth, modestly refraining from having made any play of his erudition before this time, has shown me that he is a better scholar than I am, both in conduct and in knowledge. I acknowledge myself to be outdone, and henceforth I shall strive to learn the Quran by heart. The two scholars exclaimed, How excellent is his humility, and how admirable his resolve to perfect his erudition. But, said the judge, it has also been said that public humility ceases to be so when it is the subject of dramatic show. Yet what is better than following the example of one who does not simply read the Quran, but has gone to the trouble to learn it by heart? asked the ancient. Because public drama is destructive to real achievement, I shall tell you privately, said the judge. And what he told the academic made him exclaim, This has saved me from becoming one learned from books. I will henceforth follow the path of the Sufis, the people of practice and being. And he became a Sufi, whose life illuminated and still suffuses the thoughts and deeds of the people of the way. 
What the judge had told him was, You and your fellow intellectuals read the Quran. The young man knows it by heart. But your daughter, his wife, she thinks and lives in accordance with it, although she can neither read nor write, nor dispute nor recite. Nobody comes to the house of a dervish asking for land tax and house levies. Saadi Dervishhood Abul Hassan insisted, Thinking about the affairs of this world is nothing to do with the matter of the dervish path. Thinking about the next world is nothing to do with the matter of the dervish path. They stand in relation to one another as yesterday does to tomorrow. Today, something similar, but having its own individuality, that is the dervish path. A solved problem is as useful to a man's mind as a broken sword on a battlefield. Proverb The Reflection Chamber at Doshambe The manner of tiling of the walls of the reflection chamber of Doshambe was thus. Hamid Pasa asked his disciples, some of them tile craftsmen, to arrange for the chamber, Dar el Fikr, to be tiled. They made a start on the work, and then it was delayed by a variety of obstacles. Hamid Pasa made inquiries from time to time, and in the end the master craftsman said, O Pathfinder, Rahnuma, we have not enough men and we have not succeeded in tiling the walls, and we think it would be better to say this now, since such a long time has elapsed, and you may probably wish to make other arrangements so that the chamber shall be completed for whatever use you desire it. Hamid Pasa answered, Very well, leave this work and I will arrange for its completion. The craftsmen were assigned to other tasks. After two years, Hamid Pasa called them in and showed them that the walls were impeccably tiled with glazes and workmanship of the highest quality and astonishing beauty. After Hamid died, it was discovered that his frequent absences from the Tekia were due to his having spent his time in a tile yard where he had made the necessary tiles himself. Later he had fixed them to the walls without mentioning this to anyone except certain assistants whom he asked to say nothing about the matter. His successor, Miran Jan, was asked, Why did the Pathfinder not tell us that he had done this work himself? Miran answered, His explanation to me was that if he told you, you would feel rebuked, or that you were not in a condition in which rebukes were useful. Or, he said, They would, in laziness, masquerading as proper admiration, regard me as some kind of wonder. Their trouble is laziness. My need was for the tiling. So I worked on the tiling, and I gave them work to do to improve their condition of laziness. There is one kind of man worse than the boastful man, a complaining one. Proverb Learning of the Unripe a man came to Khwaja Ahra, master of the free, and asked him a question. When the Khwaja had given him the reply, he asked permission to go, and at once quitted the assembly. Ahra said, He was wise to ask the question. Alama Sadruddin said, Did he know why he asked it? He did not know, but a part of him knew. Sheikh Mustafa Najur said he was also wise enough to leave as soon as he had the required information. Ahra replied, Yet that was another part of him. He was thinking that he should start off in time for congregational prayers in the great mosque. Haidar Gul inquired, 
Can a man then be wise inwardly in some part of himself when he is generally under the impression that he is unripe? Were it not so, no man could attain wisdom in its fullness, said the master Ahra. Alacrity and Respect Musa Farawani said, I served Sharif Abd al-Malik for twenty years, and all I got from him was indifference. But I persevered, hoping that I would understand why he should pay so little attention to me. But I have never been able to solve this mystery. Daoud, son of Zulfi, answered, Did you serve him with the same alacrity which you would have shown had he been the king? I suppose not. Did you serve him as faithfully as one serves the making of a complicated object, as does an artisan? I suppose not. Did you serve him with the alacrity which you would have shown if he had been a high official or a military commander, if you had been a petty official or a mere soldier? I suppose not. Then he was waiting for you to manifest those forms of service. The Sharif, himself serving something of the very highest, could not accept any service less than that which is manifested in lower concerns. You call something a mystery when you will not see it. You call something service which is not service at all. You have not yet begun to serve, therefore you cannot ask why your non-existent service has not been accepted. The Cripples In a public square one day, some people were shouting, Down with the throne! They were faced by a party of royal guards who were trying to beat them and take them prisoner. Sufi Zafrandos, accompanied by a few students, was watching the scene. Which party should we aid? asked a pupil. The cripples, said Zafrandos. Which are the cripples? Both. The one party is incapable of ceasing to oppose authority. The other is unable to cease opposing them. People handicapped in such a manner are in the grip of a disability which hampers them. They are crippled in thought as surely as a lame man is crippled in body. Why, therefore, do we feel sorry for, and try to help, only the physically handicapped, who are such a minority? This podcast is copyright 2016, the Idris Shah Foundation.